Welcome to a Media Tsunami movie review. Considering what is coming out here uh, very soon, or actually by the time this comes out, is already out, is the new Ghost in the Shell movie. So we decided to give the original anime a watch. And so I'm the only one who's seen this before. And it was a long time ago, so there wasn't a whole lot I really remembered all that well. But I remembered liking it, so I thought we'd share it with these guys. Right. And uh, what were your initial thoughts? So it took some time for me to, not not really to get into it, because I, I didn't find it interesting, but it was really hard to follow. Um, it did kind of just throw you in, like, there's a little bit of a brief, here's what's up. And then you're kind of left to figure out the rest of it throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. So We got talked about that's usually how it seems like a lot of animes do. Mm. I don't know if it's Japanese storytelling, maybe an Eastern thing. I, I don't know that you're kind of just thrown into the middle of an ongoing story and you got to like figure it out as you go yeah. versus the Western style. You like kind of lay it out mm. building step by step. We need a little more help over here on yeah. this side of the world. Yeah. Um, I was introduced to Ghost in the Show through Standalone Complex, which was on Adult Swim. And like the movie, it's very complex. If you just kind of watch episode like in a sporadic order, you'll feel very lost. But it was still in, like anime was wonderful, the characters were good. So I enjoyed the, that show as much as I saw it. And I've never seen Ghost in the Show in the movies, but mm -hmm. I liked it. I liked the style, I liked the story, I liked the protagonist. And I don't know enough about the antagonist to say if he, by the movie's definition, is going to be a good villain or not, but so far, it's interesting. So what we need to do next is watch the sequel to the film and conclude it. But for now, I'm interested enough to buy it just to see how it ends up. Okay. I want to come back to something you just said there, but yeah. uh, until then, I think another thing that maybe slowed us down and, and really being able to get into it and kind of find our our bearing was the fact that we tried to get it in English. <laughs> we tried like three or four times it stopping the movie. Why is it not in English and keep changing it? <laughs> so we weren't being uh, their first time around and my first time in, a, in quite a few years to see this movie. Uh, I thought it'd just be best to watch it in English so we don't have to, our eyes go back and forth to action to the the subtitles, but we couldn't get that figured out. I don't know if it's something with the my copy, if it's something with the DVD player, what it is, but it wouldn't work. So we had it on Japanese audio, English subtitles. Um, the English worked for like the first 20 seconds. They were like, hey, this helicopter's coming in. We're talking in Japanese for the rest of the movie. I think that was just part of the movie. I <laughs> yeah. think it was like, there was Japanese and English talking in that part for like a police report. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I think this had to do with the police radio banter. I was going to say, I think there was an American diplomat in Japan. And yeah. that's why they were communicating in both languages. I think more likely they were just like, let's dub it in English. Nah. <laughs> yeah, they just got lazy in the production. I that's, guess. That's why it's so. But in, in some, in, I've never really had an issue following movies like that if it's you know, completely in a different language. I, I can read the subtitles and get right back to the movie. So that that really wasn't too much of an issue for me. I'm not so. a multitasker, uh, in the in the slightest. I I, I mean, for I like to watch foreign movies, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it always takes me a good 10, 15 minutes to get into a rhythm of my eyes going back and right. forth. You know, mm -hmm. doing the scanning. And so, it, again, it took me a little bit to get into this one. Yeah. Um, but. Um, the two things that I remember from the movie was that one scene that is in the previews for this new one where they're that shallow area of water mm -hmm. and fighting that guy in the chase before that. Remember that? Yeah. And then the other thing that I really remembered was the part where uh, the major, uh, Mot Motoko? Motoko, okay. yeah. I, I can remember the major. 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 <laughs> she was on the, the tank and trying to rip it apart or rip it open mm -hmm. and just her body starts tearing apart. Those two parts were the things that, that I remembered most. So going into this, I was thinking, I remember this being an action movie, because those are the two mm -hmm. things that I remember, <laughs> right. was like really action parts. And then I was like, wow, this is a really more philosophical type mm -hmm. movie, and there's a, a lot of um, thinking a, a involved in this movie, and it, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Uh, I remembered it having an in-depth story, but I guess I didn't remember it. I felt like a lot more action yeah. was in it than so. It actually ended up being really in-depth, kind of almost controversial, um, especially with 
kind of now how society views like what is life, what is yeah. what is what is being human, consciousness, all this stuff, and the movie really kind of gets into that. And I think maybe that might be why they're choosing now to make a live action version of it. So uh, cybernetics on the rise. It's yeah. always been on the rise, but what is as you were asking us, John? Once we have AI, do they deserve or even have rights? Yeah, that's the the question. And like philosophy and mm -hmm. and ethics is uh, once they have, have you heard of the Turing test? Mm -hmm. I've heard of it, and that's all I can say. Alan Turing was a um, I believe he created a computer, and okay. anyway, he came up with this this idea that um, that uh, if you can carry on a conversation with a computer, whether it be them, the computer like putting text back to you or actually speaking and if you can't tell like if you were blinded and you just know you just know you're speaking to somebody and if you can't pick up on the fact that it's not a um, uh, artificial yeah, yeah. intelligence and you're fooled into thinking then that's the standard that AI should get to that is like the gold standard that's called the Turing test for I guess oh. the of what AI is but interesting doesn't feel like we're too far from that. I mean, if you can mat moderate the tone to be more human and have a little higher of intelligence, I mean. Well, what if it was just text? Like, it's it's like responses that would be human-like, you know, like, um, you know, if I were just right now to um, say, I'm gonna slap you in the face. Okay. So, so something so, John would say. So if a computer <laughs> says that, is that like, like, what kind of response is it human like? You know, if you throw some kind of like curveball at him, is it going to be like a, a response that you would expect? I think it's the level of intelligence that it must be at. I mean, talking to a first grader versus talking to an adult might be a little easy to program, right? Like for the first grader. I don't know. Not, not at all. Because have you seen kids say the darndest things? Yes. Like you know, and I mean, like, yeah, they do. No <laughs> telling what's coming either. Yeah. And sometimes it's smarter than things adults say. It's true. So are you smart. Well, but no, I, I get what, I get what you're saying. Like, yeah, like if you if you threatened an AI, would it just be like, oh ho ho, you're silly, or be like, what the heck, man? So like, <laughs> yeah. whereas if you tell like Siri Dash, just like I couldn't find what you were trying to search for online. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, you're a robot. That yeah. is there is another question. Will robots be the eliminator of rogue robots? Can we have rogue robots? Or will it have to be a combination of humans and machine like in Ghost in the Shell? Because there were no just robots except for the this he, the antagonist, the puppet master. And even he had some form of consciousness. Do you think he was the antagonist? That's that's what I wanted to come back to. Mm, I don't later. think he thinks so. I mean that and that it's I've always kind of liked that in a villain, like the, I, what I'm doing is completely justifiable, and then the fact that he even like tries to appeal to them, like how can you, like how can you, who are you to determine? Yeah, so, I plead asylum, because yeah. I'm what? Well, if it's not him, then it would have to be the director of section six, because That's he, how I saw it, was section, mm. section six was more of the antagonist, uh, willing to do anything to, to get them back, kill, whatever. Right. Now, uh, the Puppet Master or Project 2501, mm -hmm. that entity, we'll call it, did like hack that one guy and make him think he had a family and whatever to help further his agenda right. of, of self-discovery, kind yeah. of. So, But then at the same time, like when he, he got to the Major, he left it as like a proposal. Can I join you? Yeah. Not like... I'm taken over. Right. You know, it wasn't like a forceful thing as far as that goes, so I, I don't feel like... And she didn't seem too upset about it at the end. Yeah. So... And this is why we need to watch the sequel to, like, conclude this. But I may not be as progressive as you guys are with the robot rights. <laughs> <laughs> Traditionalists. <laughs> what do you think, though? Like, if... if I if, like find life. If, well, if you had a robot, an artificial <laughs> intelligence that... Honestly, talking to you couldn't tell the difference. Like it seemed like that was a genuine personality. It was unique, different from from other ones. Do you should they be like should they be forced to work uh, at, like nonstop because they're a machine or things like that? Do they deserve rights? You really <laughs> well. 
it, now we're talking pure robot robot yeah. here like no no uh, no brain no human well brain is I guess it depends on how you no human like anatomy nothing within. biological yeah nothing okay I I, initially, I would say no they don't have any form of rights mm. but then Metropolis comes to mind <laughs> and then also Planet of the Apes because they thought they were stupid and then they took over and then robots are just more intelligent and they will take over what, what was it sky there's a million of skynet mm -hmm. it's a popular I, thing yeah, yeah. there's another one it just came out recently i cannot remember it uh, yeah, rip if i can think of it i'll say it out loud yeah, no, ramp and technology is, is a yeah like you're gonna say I mean, that's a it's a pretty um widely done topic for science fiction movies games whatever so um but uh getting we, we went real deep there yeah philosophically yeah, well i think even for it to ever happen there has to be a real paradigm shift for how artificial intelligence is done because it's basically right now it's a computer program if this then that and you just try to think of any situation that could arise if this then that if this then that mm -hmm. when this do this when that do this you know and so mm -hmm. it's like it's a feed-in response to whatever was fed in type thing so um programmed thinking versus the free will yeah that it could develop that we think this entity the puppet master now has attained yeah. At least that, I'm not sure if he's actually attained it or not. It just seems like well, he has self awareness at any at any yeah. rate. He knows that it's an entity, mm -hmm. he exists, and he wants rights. So I, I feel like once you get to that part mm -hmm. where you know that you exist, and you can I feel like, yeah, you need some rights. Yeah. I don't know. It's a weird. I mean, I'll probably be dead before this becomes an issue. Like, this is a problem for my grandchildren. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, kids, when the robots come up, yeah. just go into hiding. So it's, it's kind of neat that, like, I mean, it's, it was. I hate. I mean, it's not really a simple movie because it does have a lot of com complex, like, mm -hmm. kind of storyline and stuff. But it, it's interesting that just something as simple as this machine being like, "Yo, I'm alive." kind of sparks this much like even just right here just not really debate but like yeah. well, what if kind of thing so that and i think that that really kind of once once that kind of started happening that really sold me for the movie so i you know but i feel like that yeah, the whole thing like you guys were asking like what's the ghost right what how yeah. would you how did you how would you it? describe the ghost or and yeah interpret i like that you want me to interpret it let's each say what we think it is because that may be best and then anyone who wants to comment please tell us what a ghost is yeah so my, for me, I, I guess it was, I, I, I don't really know how to explain it with the puppet master because my understanding was that he was just completely artificial. But for me, it, your ghost was any like semblance of humanity, your consciousness, your biological consciousness, I guess mm -hmm. is the best way I could put it. So like that was what they considered your ghost. And so I think when he was like, um, you know, I, I've, I know I'm alive and stuff. I think at that point he may have started to develop one. I don't know. That was, that's kind of what I took. It's interesting they call it a ghost. That's also, awesome. where did the term ghost come it from? It was like your spirit, I guess. Yeah, I mean, what makes you you? She differentiated between conscience and a ghost, I think, at one part. And then wasn't the guy who was hacked into, he lost his ghost or was he losing his ghost? They said he lost his ghost. I think it was because they erased all of his his uh, memories, so and they implanted something that wasn't real, so he wasn't really him so anymore. Is a ghost exterior? Is it a bug? No, that's the whole. Yeah, uh, I feel like that's the part of the name, ghost in the shell. Right, right. So your spirit or your whatever makes you you, your mind. Mm -hmm. And I think the idea that they're you're talking about in this film is that like. Does it matter what the shell is? Does it matter if it's biological? Does it matter if it is artificial? Right. If there is a thinking, self-aware entity inside whatever that shell is, is it life? Is it the same thing? But if you can delete it, if you can hack it, then what does, is that life? Or is that just But something? that's even those people too. They've been changing so much cybernetically, like the major even brought up, she was like, 
I've never like so much of me is is artificial now. Mm -hmm. No person's ever seen their brain. How can they really be aware that they even? Mm -hmm. Well, she asked the dude like, "What is the extent of your cybernetics?" And he's like, "What what does it matter?" Yeah, yeah. Like he just kind of was flippant about it. So seems like your ghost is something more tangible with a symbolic meaning. But if you can lose it, if it can be hacked, it's got to be something that you can feel, you can see, you can access. Unless dreams now and thoughts all programmed into you, right. and there's some real deep meaning, some deep underground story, we just don't know because we haven't seen part two. That one has all the answers. It's supposed to. <laughs> it has to. We need to watch it. <laughs> as soon as we finish this this film, Josh is on his phone looking on eBay for the second one. So I know he's sold on yeah, it. Yeah, I, I want to know. I want to know. This is my favorite year of anime, the '90s, and yeah. early early and late '80s as well. Best style. It's is it cell animation or? I think this is back to the hand-drawn stuff. Yeah, and that, that was that was another thing I couldn't bring it to. Like, I really liked the way the show was designed. Um, mm-hmm. You, while we were watching, you brought up Vampire Hunter D, and I feel like mm-hmm. they look very artistically similar. Yeah. And I did like it. Her eyes creeped the heck out of me, though. Yeah. But uh, I don't think she I mean, ever she, blinked. She probably did. She didn't need to. She yeah, really. that's not, uh, <laughs> she did that just to just to make you comfortable. I, I blinked. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> I'm human. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. I did enjoy it a lot. I do think we need to watch the second one. We we absolutely must without Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you're not allowed. Because he wouldn't get it. He would just be asking questions. What all is all of this? <laughs> <laughs> Fool! That's what the Wikipedia plot summaries for. Scott, I don't think it would be that way. That's all Josh. I'm so, sorry. If, assuming he even watches this, he wouldn't care. <laughs> Ten years from now, you guys called me a fool. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. I did enjoy it. I thought it certainly pre- pre- presented the AI conflict very well. Okay. I haven't thought that much about AI and cybernetics yeah. since I saw the movie AI. And that was like when I was a kid. But that was almost just obvious. He's a robot. And he's being pushed in a pool, and right. everyone hates him. It's like, oh, I feel bad. This is like reality. Some things that could happen in a more complex, futuristic society. So, I liked it. Yeah, for me, high praise for the art style, art quality, the animation. Mm-hmm. It's very fluid, mm-hmm. um, and I feel like they did a good job of telling the story too. So, mm-hmm. and it definitely makes you think if you're interested in any of that sci-fi. AI uh, philosophy ethical questions then you should enjoy this um, does this make you guys want to see the American remake I mean plot wise I enjoyed it enough that question. I'm I'm curious about it so um, I saw the trailer about a week ago and that was literally my first like oh hey this exists and then you messaged me earlier today <laughs> or the other day and was like Hey, there was some, there was an original like source material for it. I'm like, oh, okay. So, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, yeah. I mean, when I saw the trailer, I was like, that looks interesting. I may watch it when the DVD comes out. And now I'm kind of like, I'm gonna go see it. So I'm intrigued by it enough. I want to see it, but I'm only concerned that they're gonna cram both movies into one, like, hour and forty. Because then we won't have seen the sequel and know what's going on. Well, <laughs> he is, he is <laughs> like one train yeah, twice the <laughs> sequel. But what, what happens sequel. next? Think of the trailer. The, all, they, this is where a lot of my thoughts come from. They're like, you were created, but you don't know how. You don't know why. And then in one scene, I want to say there's like hundreds of bodies covered in this tar, and she's surrounded by them, reaching up for some light. That's why I'm getting a lot of my concern. Oh, in the in the, in the, yeah, the new okay. trailer, oh, yeah. Trailer, okay. Because yeah, yeah, like that's what I'm wondering, like what we were talking about earlier, like protagonists, the antagonist, the meaning, what the uh, ghost really is. Is it? She even said, "My former self or mm-hmm. my earlier self may have been killed." So but you didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. So there's something there. There's something there. Well, I think also being a part of the program she is, and she's aware of how easy it is to hack and erase, and 
if it happened to you, mm. you wouldn't know. Let's yeah. see that. You would I have no way to know. Of that. So I do want to see the movie, but I don't want them to cram all this information so tightly that the story is overlooked for action or vice versa. Yeah. I feel like that might be a route they kind of go instead. Like, like it really, there was only like two or three major action moments, and that they they'll will probably do that. So. I, I I will go see the new movie. Like I'm pretty dead set on seeing it now. Okay. I was on the fence, but I'm now. Yeah, all... I'm I'm kind of with you there too. So I won't get to see it till it comes out. So I'm gonna have plenty of time to watch, <laughs> this, watch the watch sequel. Watch the sequel, Josh, before so. I see it on home video. But I, is this like a recommend? Was there? Well, did you guys have any complaints about the movie? I have one, and that's the yeah. creepy music. And I really didn't even think about the music. Yeah, there was, well, there was, was only so like two or three moments, and I was like, I don't like this. This is it weird. Was, <laughs> it was just so. It felt so serious that you just almost like tuned it. It, out. it was. It was a little ominous, it's like in a, like not not really annoying, but like it made me kind of almost uncomfortable. And this, it was like a, there wasn't really anything else going on, like kind of showing you everyday life, kind of dragged out scene. Oh, okay. And that, so like, two or three minute area where it was just like showing different like, scenes. Yeah, and so it was like oh, uh, I know what you, I yeah. know what scene talking about. Yeah. And it, and it was weird, like it, it made me feel a little strange. Like I, music's a big thing for me, and so like I understand why they did it, and it was very emotion evoking, I guess, maybe to get you kind of into this. Your mind's about to be blown. But oh, <laughs> AI real <laughs> stuff, so I don't know. That was, I mean, but it wasn't like a deal breaker or anything. But so yeah, I would I would recommend this movie if you're interested in any kind of yeah. sci-fi robotic. I mean, if you just like stuff. old classic anime. Yeah, I, I was looking up like best anime films, and that was like in the top five consistently. I'm kind of surprised I've never really heard of it, but so I was it, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with it. Um, I have no complaints. I did like the dystopian society, that the dystopian, the like the archaic old market yeah. tugboats, mm -hmm. and then right next to it was like high tech yeah, futuristic. Real, so. They could look up the pressure on every floor and every step of the buildings. Mm -hmm. That must have just cost millions. Yeah, and these guys are still tugging cots mm -hmm. on like gas. So I want an invisible suit now. I think that'd be cool. That would be. It's an invisible like, naked suit. Invisible mm -hmm. naked. I mean, hey. Yeah. Fifty. Gotta do what I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> but uh, John, pro. Pro. I, th I think it's a given with you. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna. Rec I recommend this movie. Yeah. Uh, I I don't think it's one for everybody though. Definitely no. not. But I wouldn't say like not watch it. I yeah yeah. Yeah. I do give it a shot because it is a renowned. I mean, I was reading at course Wikipedia, three books, four movies, mm -hmm. three anime, three anime series, and an OVA. This thing's huge. It's like, a pretty good. Yeah, this franchise. And this is this was in '95, and it's still, as far as I know, going on. So it's been two decades. Oh, okay. That's impressive for an anime. Like That's most have gone in year three at most. Mm -hmm. So. But that's all I got. All right, guys. We'll see you with our next movie review. In the meantime, go watch Ghost in the Shell.